Uh, hi everybody, I'm Brent English, President of Robust Tools, and today I'm in Sam Angelo's well-equipped wood turning studio where he shoots all of his videos featuring robust equipment. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Sam. Today is May 6th, and you know what day that is? Well, it's Charlie's birthday. That's right, 2022, and she's two years old today. So Charlie, this car is for you Happy birthday! All right, now I need to give credit to Richard Raffin for the idea of these racing cars. And I've got his DVD on turning toys. And just recently, I purchased the book. And there are some projects in the book that aren't on the DVD. These, these are really, really excellent if you have a grandchild or a kid at home that you want to make a toy for. So let's move on and we'll get busy. We'll make some racing cars. All right, now you might have heard my wife's lathe in the background there. This is a joint venture. Cheryl and I are working on this project for our little baby granddaughter. Let me show you some setup here for my project, for our project. This is one of the car bodies. Here's another one. And I'm laying out center lines and everything I need uh, to have on my my car blank to proceed to the lathe. All right. Cheryl is actually working on a couple little a little uh, <laughs> peoples. These are going to go into the into the cars. Here's one I made and I'll uh, show you some clips of Cheryl working on these and, and myself. So let me start laying this out and I'm going to lay out a center and center lines all over this thing so I can uh, put this on my lathe properly. And I'm going to do some off-center turning with, with these car blanks, which is going to be important to really do a good job of laying these out. All right, I'm going to take my center finder find the center on each end and these are perfectly square. I've taken some time to make this dimension and this dimension absolutely the same. So I'm going to just put a little indentation in there. All right, so I'm going to just take a square mark my center line going this direction and this direction. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center line on the on the side of my on my car blank. All right, I've got both ends of my my car blank marked going in every direction so i've got a mark in the center here and on the end and i'm going to just uh, connect those marks and i don't know if i'm really going to need these later on but i'm going to mark them just just to be sure so i'm going to go all the way around this uh, car blank and mark a center line all right, now let me show you one more thing that I've done. These are my, my final blanks for the cars. This one here, I just made this out of a piece of uh, 2x4. And it's just soft wood, but that's my prototype. I've milled this so it's identical to the finished car blank. And I can start my, my turning with this, and if I make a mistake, it won't be a big deal. I don't want to make, whoop, I don't want to make a mistake on, on my finished car blanks. All right, now the layout on this project is very important, and I've taken some time off camera to finish up my racing car blanks, and I also have my, my prototype all marked. And I'm not really sure if I'm going to end up using all these lines, but they're there. A little uh, work on the bandsaw, then we'll go to the lathe. 
All right, let me show you the next step in this operation. This is the top of my car with the bird's eye maple piece glued onto some walnut. That'll be kind of a cool feature on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this angle right here on my bandsaw. This is one of the peoples that Cheryl has been working on and it's going to fit right in there. Now what I've got to do is cut that at an angle because the back wheels on the car are going to be bigger and they're going to lift that car up so I want this little people, not a person, it's a people, to, to fit right in there and then this is like a tenon that will go down into my car blank. So I'm going to cut that angle and then I'm going to drill a hole for this little guy right here. And I will do the same thing on my prototype. Got a push stick here. All right, now I am ready to drill the hole. This is the back of the car. It'll go something like that. Now, I've got this angle cut and sanded. I've got the center line redrawn. And when I get the, the bigger diameter wheels in the back, this will be more level with the, the ground. So, I've got this really well locked in here. I've got this, uh, this is the prototype, I've got it uh, attached with some double stick tape to a wedge down here. I've got a clamp around the body of my race car and I've got this clamp clamped down to the base of my drill press. So I'm gonna, I have an inch and a quarter Forstner bit in my drill press. take this apart and just see how we did. Let's go for a ride right there. All right, it's looking good. So let's move on now. Again, this is my prototype, so I'm going to take one of my finished car blanks and drill out the hole for that uh, race car driver. Okay, I'm showing you my prototype, and what I'm going to do is do a little turning on the prototype, and then go to my finished uh, car blank and turn it. And if I have any mistakes, I can make them on my prototype. One thing I did was kind of got that recess out of line, so I'll work on that on my final blank. I started out with the prototype and the final blank exactly the same dimensions. Pretty much a square and the length was the same. And here I'm indicating where I'm putting the axles and that will become more clear later on. Here I'm showing you that recess that I really got out of line, but that's okay. That's my prototype and that's what prototypes are for, to make the mistakes. And I do a better job when I drill the uh, finished car blanks. I've got two of them. So we'll do a little turning on the prototype off camera. Then I'll go to the finished blank and turn it. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spindle roughing gouge and simply take down the corners uh, just a little bit and we'll stop and see where we're at. Then I'm going to shape this area right here on the back of the car and that's the front of the car. Face shield.
Now, by the way, I'm turning about 1,800 RPM. All right, now, in this camera right here, you can tell that my cockpit is very nicely symmetrical. Same distance of, same amount of wood on this side and this side. So I'm gonna move my tool rest, lower the tool rest, and I'm gonna take a spindle gouge and work just a little bit back here. the same at the front of the car. Now, yeah. what I'll do probably next is move my center on this end right here down a little bit, which will allow me to take some of this wood off. Okay, I, I switched to a skew chisel and I find that uh, that gives me a much better cut. For one thing, I was having trouble with that spindle gouge. Um, I'm going to smooth this area out right in here a little bit and I'm going to move my centers and see what we can uh, come up with from there. Looks like it's time to play with the dog. Okay, here you go. Alrighty. So I've got my prototype chucked up into my lathe. And this is the first off-center turning I've done. Now, I have to consider where my axles are going to be. So the axle on the back is a little below center and the axle on the front end of the car is a little above center. And that has to do with this level area right here. I want that a little, little raised up so it is more level and parallel to the floor. I'll have bigger wheels on the back, which will be kind of cool. I can get real creative with that. Um, here is the real thing, the finished product. Look at that. Randy Racer, he's all ready to go. So I got my, my axles in here. Now, this is my finished racer here. This is my prototype, and they are pretty much in the same spot. So my next step is going to turn a little bit of this off-center. And let me talk about why I want to do that. Okay, so right in here, I want to take some of that off. Okay, and here. The back of the, of the vehicle back here is not touching. When my tool is touching here, it's not going to be touching in the back. So I'll take this off. And then the same thing up here. I want to take some of this wood off 
in this area and just uh, kind of profile that a little bit, taper that underside of the vehicle. All right, enough, enough palaver. Let's uh, do a little bit of turning on this. This is, this is fun. This is just a fun project. It's always nice to make something for a kid, no matter how old the kid is. All right, now I'm going to continue to use my spindle roughing gouge. I've got a new sharpen on that grind. And I'm going to be careful about the speed. I'm going to first start out a little slower. So I'm going to just about 900 RPM. Now I'm not sure if I can show you in this camera right here, this end camera, there's a shadow. As that turns around there's a shadow line and that tells me where the round part of my turning is someplace down here. As long as I don't get too far back in here, in fact I think I'll mark that. Oops, um, there's my little driver guy. And the next step is to turn this off center. I did a little bit of turning off center with my prototype. And I kind of got carried away a little bit. And Cheryl was in here just, just a second ago. And she said, well, why are you turning it off center? There it is. Well, I guess one answer is because I can or it's fun. I'm not sure. Um, I want to round over this area right in here. I want to take a little bit of this thickness off on the bottom of the front end. So without further palaver, face shield. Now, I took my skew chisel and cut back a little bit here because I want to allow for any uh, indentations for my live center. And uh, just to mention, on the front end of this, I've got a drive uh, center, and that's uh, the one that came with my robust lathe. It's actually a safety drive, so if I get a bad catch, it should spin a little bit. So I'm going to take off a little bit of wood right here. And then I'm going to go to the center. I want, to, I want to reduce the volume on this center bit right there. And I'm turning about 1600 RPM fairly fast, for me anyway. We're taking shape here now. From here to where the axles are up in the front, this area right in here, I'm going to reduce the diameter of that. I'm making this for a little, a little two-year-old, and you know she's she's a strong female, but uh, you know she's a little kid, so I got to reduce some of the weight in this. Am I in trouble? I don't know. Alright, 
Now, keep in mind a couple things here. I can do a little bit of shaping off camera on a belt sander or, you know, with a, oh, I don't know, spoke shave or something like that even, and I don't mind some of the flat areas. This isn't too bad right in here. Anyway, um, I gotta think about my next position being off center. If you've never turned anything off center, it's really not that difficult, okay? And I can see a spot right here that I wanna take down there and there, and I'll do that. All right, and we'll just kind of keep moving along here. All right, now I've decided at this point that you've seen enough off-center turning on the body of my race car. I'll do the rest of the work off camera. I'll turn the second car. There's just a lot more to show you. I need to turn some wheels and I need to turn a few more drivers along with the help of my wife. Uh, we're going to turn a bunch of those and that's just really fun. And I'll show you that and then we'll move on and uh, we'll put these cars together and we'll have a drag race. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a 7 16 inch hole through each one of these wheels. And then I'm going to go to the lathe and I'll show you how I turn one. They're all going to be the same. And then, beyond that, I'm going to turn the little driver guys that uh, I think is going to be really fun. And we'll try to get Cheryl involved in that too. Okay, with a little bit of experimentation, I discovered this is the safest way to do this. I've got this clamped up into a hand screw. And I'm going to just hold this free hand and it works pretty well. You can line these up. They don't have to be perfect because I'm going to true them up again when I get to the lathe. And you can see I've got a notch cut in here. Uh, I did that probably years ago for some other kind of an operation. So, yeah, seven more to go. I got each one of those marked in the center. By the way, these are all cut from a maple uh, baseball bat billet, which is very nice to have in your shop. Okay, there's my pile of wheels. We're all ready to go to the lathe and, and turn them and put a little bit of decoration on each one of them. I'm ready to turn my wheels. Let me show you my setup here. Here's one of my wheels and I've got two different sizes. This is one of the rear wheels. It's a little bit thicker than the front wheels. So I've got um, a really small set of Vicmark chuck jaws in here and I'm going to make a tenon on one side of my wheels so it will go into that scroll chuck. Okay, and I'm going to just bring my tailstock up, my live center, put a little pressure on that. And that'll be fine. That'll um, be able to run that with a friction drive. So I'm going to just take a spindle gouge and clean this up. Now, as I do this, 
Um, I'm going to reverse chuck this into my chuck jaws, but while I'm at it, I might as well just make all these tenons on here to begin with. I'll just do that all at once, and I'll just check this to make sure it fits in there. And later on, as I work on my wheels, I can simply take my tail center away. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to just go ahead and, and make all of those tenons on there, and then I can uh, show you what I do next. Okay, I've got the tenon on all of my wheels completed. Let me show you what I came up with. I use my spindle gouge to take most of that wood off right in here. And then to really form my tenon, I just used a point tool. Let me show you this on my last wheel. And that's it. Very nice tenon. I got this trued up. Now the outside of this is really, really out of balance, but I'll fix that when I reverse it into my chuck. Okay, let me show you how I have this chucked up here. I got to give Richard Raffin credit for this. He used this tenon as a little design feature on the outside of his wheel. So uh, I got these uh, small chuck jaws. They're like an inch and an eighth or something like that. So I don't even think I'm going to bring my tail center up for this operation. Now, this is one of my larger wheels. This is a back wheel. It's a little thicker. So I'm going to decorate these. I'm going to color them and texture them. But one thing I've got to do, make them all the same diameter. So I'm going to just <clears throat> take a measurement here and I'll do all my back wheels first and then I'll do the front wheels and I'll make sure they're all the same diameter and probably I need to make them the same thickness right here so I'm gonna just uh, true these up they're all just a little bit out of balance right there. So I'm going to take my spindle gouge That's uh, right on the money right there. Now what I've done is I've taken and I've just put a little bit of a dome on top of this. And while I'm here, I'm going to put just a little bit of texture on the outside of this. And that'll be a little bit of tread. Okay, so what I've got here is my um, Joe Wagner texturing tool. Very cool. I think this will be a, a good tread on the outside of that. And I'm not going to worry too much about making all these identical. It'll be fun and a two-year-old just isn't going to care all that much. All right, let's take a look and see, see how that came out. Yeah, that's okay. I like that a lot. That, that'll that work really well for the tread on that. Okay, I've selected a color for my tread, and I'm going to maybe do the same color on each pair of wheels. I don't know. That's just the fun part of this, is just kind of flying by the seat of your race car. And if you're curious, I'm using uh, a marker from the Dick Blick Studio. Yeah, Dick Blick. I didn't make that up. Now, I really like that. That's very cool. And later on, when I get finished with these, I'll put a clear coat on 
on the wheels. All right, now I think the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just sort of angle this back right here a little bit. Take my, my spindle gouge. Clean that surface up. And I'm turning about 1200 RPM, not extremely fast. A little bit of a chamfer right here. Now one consideration when I work on these wheels is this will be on one side and I'll have an identical wheel on the other and they don't have to be perfect because nobody will see them both at the same time. Yeah. All right, now, all right, let me readjust my camera. Okay, I've got a whole bunch of markers here to pick from. And I'm going to make all the, the wheels a little bit different. It'll be fun. Yeah. So I'll just pick maybe three colors on the outside of my wheel. Pink and green. I love it. And purple. That's Grace's favorite color. That's my other granddaughter. Okay, one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to just take some of this laminate and I'm going to burn some rings in here. I got a couple that I put in with my point tool. See if we can make some smoke. There we go. One more. Smoking. All right. Okay, I love it. One wheel down, seven to go. Let's take this out of here. This will be really pretty cool. <laughs> oh yeah. I like the tread. That, that's really nice. Okay, I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to do the rest of these and then I'll show you how they look on the cars. So Cheryl is doing the same operation on her driver. She's forming that tenon, and I believe she's using a skew chisel to level that out. So Cheryl's taking that template and just making sure that her tenon is sized correctly or else it won't fit into the car. So Cheryl has one of the car bodies and she's just going to test that. Make sure it fits. It doesn't need to be too tight because we're talking about a two-year-old here. <laughs> it's not. Okay, we're back over on Cheryl's lathe and she's got a beading tool and she's going to make some uh, beads on her little driver. quite hitting your, your cutting burr. You can raise and lower the handle till you find that that burr. No. 
So Cheryl is going to do a little texturing on the top of her driver. Oh boy. Robert Sorby texturing tool. And do I start in the middle or toward the end? Oh, where we want? I don't know. All right, why don't you stop your lathe and see how that? Yeah. Now, why don't you why don't you go right in the center and, and do something, and then you can just kind of move it to the left. All right, let's, let's see what that looks like. Now we do just one more on on there. Let me bring you some markers, then you can color it. Now let me let me readjust here. I'm, I'm gonna Just different spots. Yeah. You can feel the texture when when you go across there. And you can also put one color on top of another. And I like to do that. Okay, turn it off. Let me let me zoom in here. Okay, just hold on. No, it's okay. That one side just doesn't want to color very bad. All right, you probably heard my wife over there on the other lathe. Uh, she's also making drivers for our cars, and that's the last part of this project. So I'm going to show you. A little bit of me turning one of the drivers and also I'll get Cheryl in there uh, this will be the last part of the video so it's really been a fun project and I'm gonna turn my lathe on and um, make the the tenon that's gonna fit down into the car and I've got that mark right here Alright, so I've got a template here. This is an inch and three quarter inch hole drilled in this piece of plywood and I'm going to use that as a guide. This area right here will serve a couple of purposes. I'm going to reverse this into my shark jaws and when I establish this diameter here, that will go down into my car. Let's just pick a good tool here. We'll use a skew chisel. I'm going to put a little bit of a taper on this. And I'm going to make sure turn my lathe off if I put this on there. Okay, very good. Now, there I've established the diameter. So I'm going to go back from the beginning of this tenon back and I'll level that out and that'll go down into my car. I got my tenon all completed. I got the right diameter on that and I've also got the right length that'll go down into the into the car. So I'm going to reverse this and this is just going to make a nice uh, chucking uh, location and I'll turn my my driver for my car. And this fits in there very nicely into these shark jaws. So the first thing I'll do is uh, level this off with a spindle roughing gouge.
All right, now while I'm here, I just took my spindle gouge and cleaned off the top of that. I'm gonna make a little hat detail on this one, and I'm gonna take a, a skew chisel on its uh, side like this. This is end grain, so you gotta be careful, but I'm gonna just clean that up. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of sanding on that, but I think that's all I need to do. These are toys that uh, are going to get bunged up by some kid, and I hope they do. Clean this up with my skew chisel. Alright, I'm going to go back to my, my spindle gouge and work a little bit right here. This is going to be the face of my little, little guy here. I cleaned up the surface of, of my face on this driver with a eighth inch parting tool. And I'm gonna form a little bead right here, and then this is gonna be the body. So I don't wanna spend a lot of time on these because we're gonna make about 10 of them, I think. A little bit more, clean this up. Now I'm going to take a skew chisel and work right down here close to the chuck jaws. And i got to be careful I don't uh, get caught in that steel, but I think this is the ideal tool to do that. Alright, now what I've done here, you're probably hearing my uh, grinder ramping down. I've used some acrylic paint, some black paint, to color the, the hat on my driver. So I'm all ready to take this guy out of my lathe. We're all ready to go. Here it is. And I'll take this and do a little pyography on that. Or maybe Cheryl will. Yeah, I'll show you the finished product. I'll show you the rest of our little driver guys. Yeah, when they're all finished. So thank you very much for tuning in here. Appreciate it. This has been a fun project. and. Uh, Go make a toy for a kid, please.